so here we are with day three. This is a shorter video. We'll get into why that is later on when it becomes relevant. But I uh, immediately just start by uh, trying to kick things off by making more progress on D and D. Uh, at this point, you see I start storing health it's because I just made a suggestion to Tobson, the mod creator, that you should be able to uh, turn your uh, your metal mines into unkeyed metal mines, so you can pass them on to your heir in the form of artifacts. Uh, didn't happen in the end, but I've always been able to just pass on pretty much an infinite amount of health to my heir. But uh, you saw there, I just had a disadvantage duel against my liege. That uses the uh, system that Tobin created, which basically just turns the game into Darkest Dungeon. <laughs> so I uh, fought against them, which purely to the system off, really, uh, rather than saves coming to uh, duel in the normal way. Um, I was just trying to hurt him so he would die sooner. The plan is to get my... Uh, get my wife on the throne of Colin fairly soon so I can get D&D &D done because uh, I've mostly united my realm now and what's left uh, will be pretty pretty quick to to revoke and I have enough bonuses to popular opinion that it just needs to be my own faith and it'll be above 50. I also start kicking eugenics into high gear because I've been speaking to Tobson, the mod creator, and we're talking about whether or not you should be able to claim cultivation for your children. So if your child fulfills the um, requirements, then you can claim it without being that kid. So I start working on uh, on doing that. That change will eventually come in, but it requires two kids to be perfect. And uh, I don't know that at this point, so I'm still just working on getting one at a time. I'll, uh, we'll get to that later on when it becomes relevant. At this point, I'd say the economy is stable enough that I can start uh, increasing amenities and granting out court positions. So I have some grandeur because I want to get some buffs from that and I can start using uh, the uh, old court because there's some, you can get some good events out of that. So it also makes it less boring to sit here and do fuck all for God knows how long. start to invest some of the gems into building the economy as well. Unfortunately there are very few economic buildings you can build on the Shattered Plains and given that that's where more, most of my holdings are, can't really get a high income from it. I, uh, I build some in the other provinces but it's uh, it's not great but thankfully the uh, ridiculous bonuses from this high stewardship and uh, as well as stacking various things that provide monthly income from high stress means it's not, not too bad, the income's still, still kicking pretty well. At this point I decided to test out the dungeon delve because I want to make sure that I can beat it later on. Uh, I, I won't be being this character, I'll be being with the next one, but ultimately I can get 100 prowess, so it doesn't really make a difference whether it's this one or the next one. Um, the reason I need to be able to beat it is that uh, winning this delve lets you get uh, the adventurer trait, which is required for the ambition victory. So it's a, it's a pretty big deal to hold off and be able to, um, to get that with the next character. But I just want to make sure that the plan will work, so I try out here, and lo and behold, after spamming away that guy's investiture shield, I win. 
So I save scum back to before I start the delve and carry on with the game. Now that my domain limit allows for it, I start revoking all the rest of this land to, uh, so I hold it all personally to make D&D &D viable. Uh, I can use connection and stuff like that to try and make uh, increase the acceptance chance. I try to fight this war, realise I'm going to get stomped without having any men at arms, roll back, do some saves coming, get them all imprisoned and revoked eventually. But yeah, uh, that uh, basically sets the stage for D&D. &D. All I need now is to actually get my wife onto the throne and uh, become our best friend and soulmate, and then we're we're good to go. So I start trying to abduct the uh, current emperor so that I can uh, instantly win when I declare war with the Clement faction because I also couldn't hope to actually fight him with no men at arms and barely any knights. I'd not be able to afford my levies, so just kidnapping him, uh, enforcing the faction, and then instantly winning the war because he's already in prison is the uh, definitely the way to go. You can just tap a bunch of connection to get the opinion up to get people to join the uh, join the faction. But it doesn't really work, so we'll go back to the old kidnap plan. few attempts to uh, to get the scheme right but uh, with a bit of safe scumming nothing's impossible uh, the um, the chance is fairly fairly high now so it shouldn't, shouldn't take too many attempts to get it to, to roll as long as you don't discover it so just keep uh, keep making backups and saves coming to to avoid that So at this point I start making my wife into my soulmate and I befriend her so I can uh, so I can get D and D done faster as soon as I get her on the throne. The um the plan at this point to befriend her is just to continually join wars because I know that joining her war uh, progresses towards friendship, so why wouldn't it progress towards making her best friend? Turns out that does not work and I have to come up with another plan, but we'll get there eventually. So I finally get him in prison, uh, took her to the war, 
then I noticed that, uh, unfortunately, because she wasn't landed, she just took the capital of the Empire as her title, which was uh, Urethiru, which I wanted to keep, so I just give her this random province instead. Do it again, and there we go, she is now Emperor. I tried to change my feudal contract once again, because I keep forgetting that it's based on me, not based on the Liege. My feudal contract can only be changed once in my lifetime, not the Liege's lifetime. I do this like five times throughout the campaign, you're just going to have to put up with it. I just swapped my lifestyle focus over to family. This is because there is a pulse event that can give you a best friend from uh, amongst your current friends as long as you have at least three friends. I am um, that I've, I've discovered that just joining a wars doesn't progress towards friendship, so I'll uh, I'll do it that way instead. Just have to sit and wait. She's already my soulmate. Um, I'm still converting land to get the popular opinion up anyway, so uh, it's. It's not like that's the major holdback. At this point, I'm also getting very close to being able to do Whimsy. Uh, because I just need to reach the second highest level of Dynasty Prestige. Because the Proclaim Bloodline Holy decision gives plus one. Um, so, I've still not decided whether I'm going to take that immediately or if I'm going to hold that off. I uh, The advantage of taking it immediately is it gives the entire Dynasty the Hoid trait, and the Hoid trait gives plus 16% renown, so stacking that over all the members of the dynasty, you can get a lot of renown percentage out of that. The um, the downside with taking it immediately is I'll have one fewer victory to do with honour, but I said, you know what, that's a, that's a reasonable downside. I can get them to level 3 rather than level 2. As a bondsmith, I can strengthen their bond, which means they'll progress faster. Um, so yeah, I think that's the only downside. I may as well may as well just pop it as soon as I become eligible, which is going to happen pretty soon at this point. So my wife just gets attacked constantly. Um, this is entirely my fault. I converted her to the cheesy faith before putting her on the throne. And the problem with that is, as I said earlier, I created this to have maximum hostility with everyone. So all of her vassals hate her. So she is just constantly fighting. And um, it doesn't doesn't really go well for her. But I don't really care. I just need her to be emperor for long enough for me to do devotion and dominion. Then she can go and die for all I care. I, uh, when I married her, I accidentally made it matrilineal. There was no point. She was in my court. I had complete control over the marriage. I would just been doing matrilineal marriages because I was marrying all my daughters off. And I messed up. So that uh, comes back to bet me a little bit. But it's not a huge deal. Um, so I mean, when, when, uh, when she dies, it's the wrong dynasty that inherits. But... It's not, not that big a deal in the long run of things. At this point you can see I'm making quite a lot of Dynasty Procedure Month. That's because before, uh, we've always had a huge percentage bonus, but it was being applied on a very small number before. I was making plus one from being a king and getting minus one from being on double stupid difficulty. So it's basically only being applied on the number of Dynasty members value. So now that uh, I'm married to an Emperor, that's that increases my uh, the round gain for me quite a lot, which is enough to stack quite highly with all of the percentage bonuses. I've also been marrying some people off to to other realms, so that's giving some base value as well. It's always nice to get the glass monument event. Unfortunately, I'm pretty sure I have to save scum here, and I lose that for some reason. Cannot remember why, but I'm 95% certain I did not have that by the end of the game. Oh, I remember why. I get attacked by a Chasm Fiend. And when you win the war against the Chasm Fiend, it counts as killing the Chasm Fiend character. And that's bad, because I'm not allowed to kill anyone. That prevents me from getting mercy, so I uh, I can't I can't do that. So I have to save scum and lose a lot of progress.
So here I see that my uh, Renown hits the second highest level, so I claim a good Bloodline Holy, and then I claim the victory for Whimsy. I am... Um, I do eventually decide that this might be risky, so I'll go and create a backup. Like, oh, that's fine. Nothing, nothing can go wrong. This is foreshadowing. And here we are with that final province converted, I can claim Devotion and Dominion. Provide some decent buffs, nothing as, uh, as spectacular as Harmony was though. It's easily the best victory in the game and, and it's, it's fairly difficult to do under normal circumstances. Uh, obviously when you design a custom character for it, it's significantly more straightforward. But Now that the kin path is filled out, I'll start working on the Blood Dynasty Legacies. The reason I went kin second, as as I mentioned earlier, the bonus from the fifth one uh, just randomly gives you stat points uh, each year, or can give you stat points each year. So as an immortal character, the, bon the benefit of that is uh, pretty high. So uh, Blood is up next because uh, I care about genetics, I need to, uh, to get good genes bred throughout the family. So... It makes sense to go next, and I can do the increased chance of getting giant from it later on. Uh, I'm not actually sure whether uh, the benefit of choosing giant as the one to be more common is offset against all of the um, decreased chance of getting bad genetic traits. I don't actually know whether or not that's a net gain with regards of giant or not. Obviously, it's a net gain with regards to the rest of the traits, though, so I decided to go ahead with that anyway. Now at this point, I save the game because I've got a kid that is uh, fulfills all of the requirements for cultivation. So I could maybe abdicate to them. I don't want to because uh, the immortality trait that I have means I can't inherit titles. So uh, I wouldn't want to abdicate unless I was ready to do honour, which I'm not close to yet. But as I said earlier, I've been speaking to the mod creator and we're considering whether or not you should be able to claim cultivation for your kids. So I save it. Uh, with her and I then wait until she's close to adulthood and I then stop the game for a bit and that's why this uh, episode is much shorter than yesterday's because I was waiting for the patch to come out to do claim cultivation I uh, we end up I know that I'm going to end up needing two kids so uh, say it's going a bit until I get a second one to also be a kid during the same time but um I thought that I needed one son and one daughter, so there's a lot of saves coming done around getting a son with the perfect traits. Uh, ultimately, that was really annoying for the uh, for Tobin to implement, so I just need to be two kids at the same time. Um, so I go ahead and just saves come here. wasn't was not worth it. Could have been looking for daughters, but I want to look at sons. But I get one eventually. Uh, this is not all the saves coming. This is, I, I was recording it in five minute batches, and if nothing happened, I would delete that five minutes. So, <laughs> I, I'm not going to tell you how long was missed. You don't want to know. Um, but we get, we get there eventually. Shouldn't take too much longer here. Uh, but ultimately, this all ends up being pointless. Because while Tobin does make the change to allow you to claim cultivation for your kids, 
there is a requirement to see cultivation, which is that you have a, a father and a mother. And you'll remember at the start of the game, uh, when I joined Hoyd's Dynasty, I chose to be a distant relative and not the sibling of their child. So this means I don't have parents, which means that I uh, sit here and wait for hours for this patch, and it's not at all relevant because I cannot see the victory to claim it, even with a new patch. There's also changes to Mercy coming in the patch, which is that rather than specifically requiring you to release 100 prisoners who you have execution reasons on, it's changed to instead grant 250 acts of mercy using a new uh, interaction. An act of mercy is basically forgiving a hook, uh, forgiving a crime, giving up your claims on anything they hold, whether that's provinces or artifacts, stuff like that. Um, there's a bug when this patch first comes out, which I thought was that it isn't taking into account difficulty tier because it's meant to be 50 per difficulty tier uh, with a minimum of 100 but it's actually um, uh, when, when I when the patch comes out and I try it I see that I only need 100 so great I can I can claim this uh, or I can use this to try and get told to change <laughs> cultivation to let me claim it despite not having parents uh, in return for not claiming mercy with this bug. Unfortunately, it turns out the bug's kind of my fault, and it's not what I think it is. Um, my difficulty tier hasn't been set correctly. I have all of the debuffs from difficulty, but there is a difficulty tier value that is set at the start of the game, but it's only set if you set the difficulty from the main menu rather than from the character screen. So, because I set the difficulty from the character screen, uh, I'm at difficulty tier zero. Uh, it's not impacting a whole lot, uh, it makes the dungeon delve harder. Remember the one that I tested earlier and made sure it's super easy? Yeah, it makes that harder. Sure, nothing bad can come of that, right? Uh, and it makes schemes slightly harder, so I would have had to save scum a bit more to get the abducts to fly. It's it's not really a huge deal. Uh, Told to say that it's fine, it doesn't invalidate the run. Uh, I will fix it at, before the start of day four. Um, but yeah, the, um, the, the, the bug with Mercy is my fault, so I decided I won't be claiming it. Uh, until I've fixed that, so it will require 250, and I will not be getting cultivation done with this character, which is very, very sad, because it means I sat waiting for this patch for no reason, and wasted multiple hours of game time. But uh, we'll get there in the, re in the long run either way. The change to cultivation does still provide some benefit to me, which is that I don't necessarily have to abdicate into a child that is perfect now, because my next character will be becoming immortal via ambition anyway. So I can just abdicate, and that child that does have parents, so they'll be able to claim the new version of cultivation by having two perfect kids. So it's uh, it's not not too too bad. It still provides some benefit, just not as much as I was hoping for. And that is basically the end of day three. <laughs>